please excuse my bad writing skills. It's currently 1.30 a.m., and I just want my story to get out there. I'm not trying to write a story in any way. So this happened a few weeks ago, and I'm still trying to get over how crazy this was. I'm only 15, and this has to be one of the most fucked up things that have ever happened to me. Me and my friend, who we will call Cody, had been to the cinema, and we were getting back pretty late, around 1 a.m. We stupidly decided to go to Tesco, which is a major supermarket here in Scotland, to get food and drink in order to just stay out all night. Also, may I add, yes, it was very fucking cold, but I had gloves and a jacket, and shit was fine. Back to the story. We spent a few hours in his garage, which happens to be an Xbox, drinking vodka and smoking weed because why the fuck not? We wanted to have some fun, but for some fucking stupid reason we decided to take some ecstasy, or exes as we call them. We took one pill each and we were waiting for it to kick in. Already drunk and high, we decided to head out. After getting out of his estate and walking another 10 minutes or so, we got to a local wooded area where people take their dogs walking. We started gathering some food and wood for a fire when we stopped in our tracks to hear the sound of metal dragging along concrete. We turned around to see two dark hooded figures walking slowly towards us, maybe 80 feet away, and these guys are dragging sledgehammers along the nearby path. We completely legged it out and did not stop sprinting until we were back in his garage. Forgetting that we had taken these pills, they kicked in, and boy do I wish I hadn't taken one of those fucking things. The rush kicked in and before we could even consider what happened, we decided to go back out there, armed. Cody, I shit you not, taking an axe from his garage, and me with a baseball bat with a knife in my pocket. We headed back, out. Once we were back in the forest, I used my Zippo for a light and Cody used a torch. Why two lights, you ask? So we could both look in different directions, and we were high as fuck. We got a good half mile in the forest when both of our lights went out. A lighter and a torch? Then the sound of snapping branches filled the forest surrounding us, gradually getting louder. We freaked out and ran faster than I thought was possible. Nearing the end of the wooded area, the two figures stood, motionless, hoods over heads, at the exit, still with the sledgehammers. By this time, the MDMA had kicked in to full throttle, and we both carried on, running towards them, swinging our weapons, getting closer and closer until... Next thing I remember, Cody woke me up in his garage at 7 a.m. Being startled, I looked around myself. Lighter, bat, and knife on the ground. And then I noticed that I was just in my underwear and my stomach was sliced. Not badly, but enough that there was blood from it that had trickled onto my leg. Maybe two inches across and half an inch deep. Then Cody pointed out there was fucking hair in my wound. Not much, but it was thick and black. 100% neither mine or his, as we both have blonde hair. I noticed Cody's face and back are engraved with deep scratches, and that his t-shirt was nowhere to be found. My bat had a weird oily liquid on it, and Cody's axe had small amounts of thick blood that did not look directly human in any way. We sat in silence for 10 minutes before I decided that it was best to leave. Cody and I have not spoke about this since. As we both know what would happen was completely fucked up. I dread to even think what happened that night beyond the barriers of my memory. This story takes place over a year time span. I was with my best friend still to this day, we'll call him Josh. Josh was at my house and we were broing out playing video games, you know all that stuff you do with your friends. After a while of playing some games we got bored. Josh suggested we go on a walk, it's around 12.45 a.m. I live in a relatively safe neighborhood. We're walking and we come to a street I haven't been down. We turn. Big mistake. We pass a house with a huge bay window and we see a group of people in it. They're singing. You know those tips from a smoker commercials? That's what the singing sounded like. The singing is getting louder. Josh and I hide behind a bush in the yard to see what happens. I stand up and the front porch light turns on because we were in range from the motion sensor. The group turns and stares right at Josh and I. In the dim light, we see they have upside down crosses on their heads and what appears to be blood. We book it down the road. We get back to my house and we don't say a word to each other. After Josh leaves the next day, I take my dog on a walk. I turn on the same street with the satanic ritual the previous night. 
I see a crumbled up paper on the ground. I uncrumpled it, and it was my Facebook profile picture with the eyes cut out, and blood smeared on the picture. I run home. I don't tell anyone. Flash forward a year, Josh and I were taking my brother trick-or-treating. We turn on that godforsaken street. We avoid the house. We go to the neighbors and an old lady in latex gloves with scraggly hair and a scratchy voice comes out and says, God bless you. It made a cross on all of our foreheads. We leave that street after that. Josh and I don't speak about what happened. Believe what you want, but I'm telling the truth. My wife and I are outdoorsy people. Our first date was a picnic in the middle of the woods. Our wedding was in my parents' backyard, which is almost surrounded by forests. This matters because this story begins and ends in forest. Late summer of 2014. It was one of those moist kind of summer days. My lady and I went on our weekly stroll or hike through a forest near our home. About three-fourths of the way through, she noticed a pile of hair, wire-like hair. Of course, we didn't touch it, but we didn't know what to do. It was clearly hair from a person's head, not an animal or anything. But other than that, we didn't think much of it. The next week we went back, but this time the hair was gone. In the place was a letter, clearly had just been placed there, as if someone was waiting for us. The letter read, Why did you ignore me? I told my wife it was just trash, but obviously she didn't believe me, but knew she would be better off. Early summer of 2015. Nothing had happened ever since. I wish it would have stayed that way. We walked around the same area that we made our discovery. We never really talked about it, if it did come up. We would joke about it saying that Brittany was at it again or something. Anyway, at this time, my wife is about four and a half months pregnant. So we took an easier path to just walk. About halfway through our walk, I heard a whimper to my right. I looked out, there was a woman, about in her early 40s. She was dirty as if she had just rolled in dirt for days. She was holding onto trees, digging her mostly broken or numbed fingernails. I took my wife's arm and led her behind myself and asked, Ma'am, are you alright? Do you need me to call someone for you? She replied, but I couldn't make out what she said. Pardon? Why? Why? She started vomiting what looked like black mud. I noticed my wife to start walking away while I stayed back to make sure she didn't follow or chase us. She didn't hesitate to start walking off. Knowing she was pregnant was most likely the reason. But when the woman noticed my wife walking away, she charged at us. Unknowing of her strength, I didn't prepare to be pushed down. I fell on my back, and she was on top of me. She tried to scramble up while staring in the direction of my wife. I tightly wrapped my arms around this woman, and she started vomiting onto my forehead. She tried screaming, but she would just choke. Once she had finished, she screamed, Why did you ignore me? But I was too engaged in the idea of how the fuck am I going to get out of this. I started to wiggle to try to get myself on top of her. Once I did. What next? Stand up, shake hands, and leave? No. My face was right on her upper breast, so I couldn't just whip my face into hers. I got my arms out from under her, and I used them to hold her arms down and I lift myself, almost like a push-up. Then I press my foot-filled boot onto her stomach. Then I mentally count down to five. Then I accidentally kick her chin with my other foot-filled boot and I take off. I look back at her gripping her jaw and reaching for me while screaming. It's amazing how fast a person can run when they really feel like they could die. I dodged every rock and tree. I even went off the trail just in case she ever got up and ran for me. Eventually, after what felt like hours, I meet the edge of the forest on the side of the road. Our town is half a forest. I look to the right, no wife to be seen. I ran to our car and she wasn't anywhere to be seen. I leaped into the driver's seat and started screaming and pulling at my face, punching the wheel and stomped. Then I heard crying and screaming in the back, and it was the love of my life, laying on the seats, holding her ears, knees to her chest, or as close as they could get. I pulled myself back there so fast I don't even remember and I hugged her so fucking tight she smacked me off because of the vomit on my head. End note. We did not call the police because this experience caused my wife a lot of stress and sleepless, sleepless nights that she had a miscarriage and we chose to forget. We do not go on walks that aren't by roads or buildings. 
It's been five years since then, and we have two beautiful boys. We never saw this woman again, and I hope we never do. This story takes place before me and my wife were married. I had stayed with her at her aunt's house that she was leasing from other people she knew. They had lodged me in a room all by myself during my stay. This room had a mirror at the foot of the bed, which I thought was weird. A low bed that didn't seem like there was even a box spring, and some pictures scattered in frames decorating the room. They had shown me my room and it was late, so I settled my stuff and tried to get some sleep. The house was quiet, and after laying there a bit, I couldn't sleep, so I went downstairs to get some water. When I came back up, I noticed there was a lock on the door on the outside of the room. This unnerved me. Why would they put a lock outside of the door? I can understand putting one on the inside for privacy, but outside is just creepy. It made me think of movies when the lock demon possessed children in their rooms. I didn't want to roam the halls or anything to chill until I was tired, so I tried again to force myself to sleep. I closed the door, pulled the string for the light above, and tried to get some sleep. After I laid down for a short while, the light turned on by itself and totally freaked me out. I rose up in bed and directly in front of me was the sight of my head in the mirror. This mirror was positioned weird at the foot of my bed and the only part of my body I could see was my head at the bottom of the mirror while I could see the rest of the room around me reflecting in it. It's kind of freaked me out because it looked like a floating head. My head was flying in the air looking back at me. I tried to relax and was looking around the room. That's when I noticed the pictures. The pictures were black and white pictures, but not current ones. I'm talking like they were taken at the turn of the century, late 1800s, early 1900s. Pictures of couples, families, graved in the exact clothing you'd imagine them wearing. It definitely felt like I was being watched at this point. These photos unnerved me. Yes, they were creepy. Definitely something you'd see in a horror movie. And there was some crazy behavior happening, but I felt like it would all be better if I could just force myself to get through the night. I decided to ignore the photos and just convince myself that the light issue was just a short in the walls, so I got up, turned the lights off from the switch on the wall, then laid in bed again. It was then again that the lights flipped back on. A little pissed and unnerved, it was at this time that I flipped the lights out again and went downstairs to sleep on the couch. I didn't want to deal with the illuminated hysteria any longer. I've had enough of this house. Hey guys, Sinful Savant here. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure to comment, like, share, and subscribe to join the Sinful Nation. And make sure to email me any true scary stories that you guys want to share. And then I will share them in the next upcoming videos, guys. My email is in the info box below. And until next time, stay sinful.